Hello, my darling. Now, first, I want to tell you that this book is about a potaroo. And I didn't know what a potaroo was, so I looked it up, and I even looked up several places to find out how to say it. But a potaroo is a kind of mouse rodent looking animal that lives in Australia. And actually, there aren't many of them left, which explains some things in this book. So my dear, I am going to read this book to you. And the name of this book is called Miss Lily's Fabulous Pink Feather Boa. And it's by Margaret Wilde and Carrie Argent. Books. Kind of figure out how to do this. Okay. Here we go. There she is again. She's got something in her ear. Look, it's an earring. That's so cute. All right, here we are. Up north, where the hibiscus flowers were as big as dinner plates and the trees blossomed with white cockatoos was Miss Lily's tropical holiday house. When the last potaroo struggled up the steps of the holiday house with her big suitcase, she nearly died of fright. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she had no idea that Miss Lily was a crocodile and such a big one. Oh, look at her. During dinner, the last potaroo kept glancing nervously at Miss Lily's enormous snout. Her strong, sharp teeth she felt much better when Miss Lily said kindly, I have a very small appetite and I only eat fish. Later that night, when the other guests went up to bed, Miss Lily asked the last potaroo to have a cup of peppermint tea with her on the veranda. At first, the last potaroo was too shy to say much, but soon she found herself confessing, I'm so lonely. I think I'm the only potaroo left in the whole of Australia. Miss Lily patted her paw. I'm sure that somewhere there are others of your kind, she said. You must be brave. You must go looking for them. Maybe one day, said the last potaroo. But she didn't know if she'd ever be brave enough to journey that far. During the day, the guests rode down the long brown river, went for walks in the rainforest, and lazed in the hammocks. Sometimes the last potaroo joined them, but mostly she just followed Miss Lily around or sat for hours on top of the hill, gazing at the long red road that wound itself. In the evenings, Miss Lily took off her apron, put on her fabulous pink feather boa, and danced the tango. The boa, which had belonged to Miss Lily's mother, and before that to her mother's mother, made Miss Lily look splendid, so young, so carefree, so joyful. When Miss Lily finished dancing, she always flung her feather boa into the crowd. Once, the last potaroo caught it, and as she draped it around herself, everyone exclaimed, it suits you, you look wonderful. The last potaroo sparkled, feeling for a moment that she could do anything and everything. <laughs> it seemed to the last potaroo that the feather boa was somehow magical. She started dreaming about it 
and when she woke up in the morning she longed for the evenings so that she could once more see the boa and if she was lucky catch it and drape it around herself one morning while miss lily was weeding the vegetable garden the last poodaroo tiptoed into miss lily's bedroom and opened the trunk in which the feather boa was kept she only wanted to put it for put it on for a moment just to feel it curling around her but as if in a trance she found herself picking up a pair of scissors from Miss Lily's dressing table and snipping off a piece of the boa. <gasps> Humming under her breath, the last Poteroo folded the feather boa away in the trunk and took the little piece to her own room. Oh, look. She slept for a while. But when she woke up and saw the scrap of boa next to her on the pillow, she was horrified. How could she have done such a thing? And what would Miss Lily say when she found out? But the next time Miss Lily wore the fabulous pink boa, feather boa, she didn't seem to notice anything different about it. Hmm, look, but she didn't seem to notice. The last potaroo buried the piece of boa at the bottom of the hill. For nights afterwards, she was plagued with dreams of the boa wiggling out of the soil and dancing up the steps of the holiday house. Oh my goodness. At the end of the month, the guests went home, family after family, until only the last potaroo was left. Goodbye, said Miss Lily. Goodbye, said the last potaroo, struggling down the steps with her big suitcase. She didn't want to go home. She wished she could stay longer, perhaps as Miss Lily's helper. Wait, said Miss Lily. The last potaroo turned around, beaming. This is for you, said Miss Lily, and she gave the last potaroo her fabulous pink feather boa. Oh, said the last potaroo, thank you. She wrapped the boa around her body, around and around and around. As she did so, her eyes shone, her fur was gleaming, and she felt that she could do anything and everything. But suddenly, her joy evaporated. I can't take this, she whispered. I did something dreadful. I wanted the boa so much that I stole a bit of it. I know, said Miss Lily softly. They hugged each other hard. I hope she finds what she's looking for, said Miss Lily, as she watched the last poodaroo disappear along the red road that wound south. In the months that followed, Miss Lily often thought about the last potaroo. One afternoon, she received a postcard. It said, Dear Miss Lily, I can't wait to tell you my news. See you next Sunday and please make a booking for ten. Your good friend, no longer the last potaroo, and she taped to the pace guard two tiny pink feathers. Oh my goodness. Ah, very early the next Sunday, no longer the last potaroo and her new friends tiptoed through the gate of the holiday house and up the steps to surprise Miss Lily. Look, she found other potaroos, and she's no longer the last one. With the biggest hug ever. And ever. And that's the end of this book.